as the Bowling Green Falcons take on the Miami Red Hawks. In the back East Division, opposite us tonight on ESPN2 is that important game between Buffalo and Ohio. Bowling Green with a win tonight becomes bowl eligible. So glad that you could join us along with two-time Super Bowl winner David Diaz and Fonte. I'm Mark Neely. David, here is Miami with interim head coach Mike Bath in his fourth game looking for their first win of the season here tonight. But Bowling Green is a team, if they win out, they're in the MAC championship game. Yeah, absolutely. Everything they want is right for them. They control their own destiny in the East. They still have to play Ohio and Buffalo. So despite their loss last week against Toledo, everything's in their way right now. And so it'll be exciting to see how they get going in that direction. You called Bowling Green's first game of the year against Tulsa, and you witnessed when Matt Johnson supplanted Matt Schultz as the starting quarterback for Bowling Green. Johnson seems to have added a different element to the Falcons' offense. Well, number one for a young player, he's taking care of the football. He adds a dimension in their run game, the quarterback run game, that he's doing a great job doing that as well. But the best thing he's doing, he's accurate with the football, he's converting on third down, he can throw from the pocket, and he has the ability to extend plays in the passing game as well. And so his future is really bright here at Bowling Green. Well, Miami starting quarterback, Austin Boucher tore his ACL in their last game against Ohio. So he's out for the remainder of the season, being that he's a senior. That's a collegiate career-ending injury. So without Boucher, they will play two quarterbacks tonight, Austin Gearing and Drew Coomer. Well, head coach, interim head coach Mike Bath feels he has an obligation to play both young quarterbacks. Austin Gearing is a guy that leads the team in rushing, six foot five, a tall, athletic guy that's really good at running the football. And Drew Coomer is a guy that's more of a pocket passer. Both can be asked. He's trying to evaluate the quarterback position for the future here at Miami of Ohio. Again, this is game four for interim head coach Mike Bath. He took over after Don Treadwell was fired during his third season. Bath, just 36 years old, played quarterback here at Miami back in 1998 through 2000. And Dave Clawson in his fifth season as the head coach for the Bowling Green Falcons. Again, his team with a win tonight becomes bowl eligible. And they're trying to keep the pressure on the two teams, Buffalo and Ohio, also in the Mac East Division race. It is heads. You won the toss. What would you like? There's the coin the toss. All right. Looks like Miami has Miami won the has toss. Won the toss. I'd like you to receive. What team would you like? If they're not going to put your backs to that side. Miami's won a toss, we'll receive at this end to start the game. So the Red Hawks will get the football first to begin this game. And this is the 70th meeting in the series between Bowling Green and Miami. You see Miami leads it 42-22 with five ties, but Bowling Green has won the last couple in three of the last four. You mentioned the Bowling Green quarterback situation with Matt Johnson, but really Bowling Green this year and last year in many ways david has been defined by their defense it's been one of the best not only in the conference but in the nation well they're, they're the best right now in the conference in the mac and i tell you what this team they really have no weakness they are solid on both sides of the ball and with the quarterback play they're getting out of matt johnson it really allows them to maybe take the next step and they have their eye on playing in detroit for the mac championship game See Matt Schiltz there, number seven, who was the starting quarterback the last couple of years and in the opener against Tulsa. But when things stalled, I guess is the best way to put it, David, in that, in that season opener, they inserted Johnson, and the rest is history, as they say. <laughs> There's Bowling Green and the white tops with the orange pants tonight. Miami wearing the red tops with the white pants and we're ready to go from Oxford, Ohio. Fred McRae is back deep to receive the Anthony Farinella kickoff to begin this game from Oxford. Farinella just a sophomore out of Woodridge, Illinois. Been the kickoff guy each of his two years now with the Falcons. And from the one, Fred McRae, 20, cuts towards the sideline, 25-30, a stutter step at the 35, but is pulled down at the 36. There is a flag down. Ubu Gates on special teams with the tackle of McRae. Let's see about the flag and our referee, Don Willard.
Holding during the return. Number 42, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Number 48 from Bowling Green. Lost his helmet during the play. He must hit out for one play. So there's a situation after just one play, the kickoff and bringing out the Miami offense is a redshirt freshman, Austin Geary. And Austin Geary is their leading rush on offense, too. And a big part of their offense will be that quarterback kind of read power game, too. Speed, sweet, power off the quarterback action. Line up in the pistol as well. We begin the game here in the pistol. Gearing with a pass to the 23 yard line. A completion to David Frazier. And a gain of seven on first down. Cameron Trust, the quarterback with the stop. Here's David Frazier, who missed the first four games of the season, but despite that, this is his 18th catch of the year right there, second most catches on the Red Hawks team. Second down and three. Keeping at that time, gearing. Gained a yard or two close to the first down. Let's see where they spot it. Let's take a look at our impact players, David, when the Red Hawks have the football. Well, they got to get some balance going, too. Spencer Treadwell's going to try and get that running game going along with their quarterback. And then Steve Mark, their tight end, could be the quarterback's best friend, working in the middle of the field, some easy completions. And then Boo Boo Gates with the loss of Gabe Martin, a linebacker, really becomes a leader of that defense. He's experienced. He's an all-conference player, and he'll be involved in a lot of plays here this evening. Gary did gain enough for the first down. So first down Miami on this first possession of the game. Gary keeping again. Thrown down at the 34 yard line by DJ Lynch. Another gain of seven and you see Gary go to the sideline. So looks like we'll have our first appearance of Drew Coomer as quarterback. And we should say David both these quarterbacks did play even when Boucher was the starter and healthy. Come out in the I formation. Nemec is the back. Coomer to throw. And he's going deep down the sideline. And double coverage incomplete. Wanting a flag is Scott. And will not get it. It looked like he might have been giving a little tug on the shoulder. Ryland Ward was one of the two there in the double coverage. He was definitely pulled down. You'll see right there. Pulled way down with the ball in the air. I don't even know how the official missed that call. That was Ward who pulled him down. Drew Coomer, redshirt sophomore out of the South High School in Cincinnati. Again to throw across the middle, caught, but immediately knocked down at the 37 yard line. Once again, David Frazier with his second catch of the game, and that goes for four yards. And you'll see kind of how the offense will morph a little bit between the two quarterbacks. But one thing that Mike Bath, the interim head coach, want to do is get these guys off to a good start. Give them some easy throws. You see him work in both areas of the field. And again, running the football. Austin Gearing back in as quarterback. This is a team, David, that ran the triple option to begin the season, Miami. Under head coach Don Treadwell. The keeper. DJ Lynch. Bringing down the quarterback again at two up near the 40. And Gearing goes out. Coomer comes right back in. That's the right tackle. Zach Lewis hobbling off. Junior out of Mount Prospect, Illinois. Second down and eight. For the Red Hawks at their own 40. This is the first possession of the football game. Fakes the handoff to Nemec. Now flushed out. Coomer's throw incomplete at the 48 for Scott. It's Jude IJ Barima on the coverage. Well, you're gonna see Coomer right away. Look, they're trying to take a shot down the field. It's not there. He makes a good decision. Goes to the second read. Look at the accurate throw on the run. Got to find a way to make plays for your quarterback in your offense when you're a team. That hasn't found a win yet. Third down at eight. Going deep again along the sideline and incomplete. Or is it? They say it is a catch. 
at the 34 yard line. Alvante Jenkins somehow came down with that with Cameron Truss right in his grill a gain of 26. Well again you'll see Coomer putting the ball up where his right receiver can make a play on it and look at him focus on the ball and maintain possession. Wow <laughs> that's some concentration. So a gain of 26 and a first down they convert on third down at eight. And now into Bowling Green territory. Gary keeping, and he stood up at the 30 yard line by Paul Swan, the middle linebacker. It is a gain of four. Well, this is the kind of drive that Miami of Ohio needed right away. Get things going offensively. And look, this is the third week of their install of this offense. And they lose the quarterback that this was kind of designed around. So both these young guys come in, looks like they have a clearly defined role, and got this thing going on their first possession. Yes, this is a team that's 0-8, but in four of those eight losses, they were tied at the half of four of those games. Here's the tenth play of this drive for the Red Hawks. Coomer gets rid of it wisely. And he was about to be sacked back at the 40 by Paul Swan. So they converted a third and eight just a short time ago on this drive. Now they're quickly back to the line in a third down at six. And they're trying to go up tempo on third down to limit some of the pressure packages of Bowling Green on third down. Coomer being chased by four Falcons in a sack back at the 45. Paul Sin able to get to him. Brian Sutton, number three, also was one of them in pursuit. And he loses 15 yards. Again, they go to move the pocket to avoid the pressure, but he's got heat coming from his backside, trying to spin out of it, just couldn't get rid of the football. Tucked it away, tried to avoid the turnover. A pretty good drive for Miami, but it stalls. Jack Murphy to punt. Ryan Burbrink. Ryan Burbrink back at the Bowling Green 10. High booming punt. That's going to land at the 7 and hop into the end zone. So the Falcons will begin at their own 25. Well, hey, a Sports Center top 10 nominee on this terrific catch. Good drive for the Red Hawks, but it stalls. ESPNU College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Disney Parks. Come show your Disney side. Downtown Oxford, Ohio, the corner of Main and High Streets. And with the fall foliage, the colors, beautiful time of year here in Oxford, which is very quaint, but very beautiful Midwestern college town. David. Absolutely. A chance to walk around a little bit last night. Well, the first drive for Miami ate up nearly five minutes. 
but that sack taken near the end of that drive really was a killer for the Red Hawks. And Falcons, their first possession begins at their own 25 for quarterback Matt Johnson. Travis Green is the back. Zone read, and Johnson's going to throw across the middle incomplete at the 32 yard line. The tight end, Alex Bear, is the intended receiver. Matt Johnson, sophomore out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I tell you what, the more video that I watch of him, I really like his game. He does a lot of things very well. He's accurate with the football, he takes care of it. And he gets it done on third down with his arm and his legs. Moore goes in motion. There's the fly sweep. Moore running right. Averts a couple of tacklers and steps out around the 32 yard line. Run out by Randy Anderson. It's Ronnie Moore, the slot receiver who they brought from that left side with a jet sweep. And he's a guy that's going to run their fly sweep. Again, the motion's there. He gets the perimeter. You see his speed. He's giving them a real explosive element. From the wide receiver position and big playability. Walking the tightrope on the sideline there. If he Just was able to stay in bounds. He would have a lot more green in front of him. But a first down for the Falcons. First carry for the back green. All the way up near the 43 44 yard line. Tackled by Josh Dooley. 12 yard run. Travis Green, the registered sophomore. One of our impact players. Yeah, Travis Green again, a converted wide receiver, gives a big playability out of the backfield. Does a lot of things for him. And Alex Bear, the tight end, he's down the field. He can block. He usually takes you to the football. And that's the responsibility of Kent Kern. He's got to lead that defense, get those guys lined up against all the misdirection that Bowling Green does offensively. The Miami defense without safety, Jay Maston, who's out with a broken foot. Keeping Johnson throws caught by Bear who's undercut at the 42 yard line of Miami. By Bryson Burris. First down and a gain of 14. You talk about the misdirection. Look at the formation first of all, the split flow, the fake end around, and now the quarterback has the ball and finds his tight end over the middle. Requires a lot of eye discipline from you defensively. Well, after an incompletion on their first play of this drive, they've had three consecutive plays. Oh, for 12 or more yards. And a first down now at the Miami 42. Johnson completed to the 35 yard line. It's Heath Jackson. Mark about at the 29, stepping out there along with Tyler Tucker. Sam linebacker 13 yard gain. Well, and you see Matt Johnson's ability to deliver a ball while taking a hit. He stood in the pocket, stared down his receiver, and got it off. And you'll see what Miami of Ohio is doing again, playing a cat mouse game. Are they two high safety, single high? That time they bring pressure from the field and get the hit on Johnson. Falcons driving first down at the 29 of the Red Hawks. And Johnson under center this time. Gives to Travis Green a big hole right up the middle. Makes a cut and a spin. 15 pulled down from behind at the 11 by Wes Williams. A 17-yard run for Green. And you'll see Travis Green. You see his ability, his vision within the line of scrimmage, his ability to make cuts. He's got some real speed, and that's one of the reasons they moved him from wide receiver to running back to complement their offense and give them some big playability at the running back position. Look at that, you know, averaging six yards a carry. For 900 yards. He's not a real big guy, but boy, he does a pretty good job and shows good patience when he runs between the tackles. Listed at 5'10", 181. Johnson pulled it out of the belly of Green. He keeps across the 10 near the 9. Tyler Tucker stopping him after a gain of three. Are three things to watch from Oxford, Ohio. See, last week, Bowling Green had a few drops that cost him dearly in that football game. Watch how many times Matt Johnson runs the football, designed quarterback runs, and if they can avoid the negative plays on first down to keep the sticks moving. Now last week, Bowling Green lost the battle of the I-75 rivalry game to Toledo 28-25. They were down 21-0 in that game, came back, but in the end, beaten by Toledo, running left. Green down 
near the five. Rice and Burris hauling him down, a gain of about three. It will be third down and four. So they can't pick up a first down without scoring. Line to gain there is right at about the two, and a third down and four here. Jordan Hopgood now the back. Three receivers to the right. Johnson a lot of time, a ton of time. Throws to the end zone and in. Joplin touchdown. Sean Joplin caught it right at the goal line and tumbled in his second touchdown catch of the season. And here's the poise of Matt Johnson in the pocket, too. Nothing opens up to him right away, but you'll see his ability. Hold on to the football, stay calm in the pocket, and deliver a strike. Look, he looks left and right. Now watch the fastball into a tight window to Joplin. Joplin's team leading 33rd catch of the season. Tyler Tate on for the point after out of the hold of Alex Bear. And he knocks it through. 6.05 to play in the first quarter from Oxford, Ohio. Bowling Green, their first possession of the game, marches down the field. They lead 7-0. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Well, the Joplin touchdown catch capping off a nine-play, 80-yard drive for Bowling Green that ate up just over four minutes, and they lead 7-0. The had over six minutes to play in the first quarter from Oxford, Ohio. Fred McCray and Robert Williams III are back deep to receive the Anthony Farinella kick. Williams. Well, it's a night here at Oxford, mid 50s. Calm wind. Not a bad fall night at all. And a low kick that's going to roll. Picked up at the 11 by McCray. At the 25. And stop there at the 26 yard line. Play, and once again, Boo Gates yards. on special teams. Second drive for Miami. The first one went pretty well, David. It did stall, but went over 10 plays with the 15 yard sack, 15 yard loss. And the tail end of that drive really 
kind of left them with a bad taste in their mouth. Well, that's one thing that, you know, retro freshman quarterback has to learn, or is the, the sophomore actually, Drew Coomer, is when you can take a sack when you can. Here's the fly sweep for Scott. They want Scott stopped by Ryland Ward. For two yards. Scott's been their primary wide receiver this year. Here's Scott out of Columbia, South Carolina. He's also their top returning receiver this year. Had seven touchdown catches last year, one so far this season. Geary to the near sideline. Completed pass to Treadwell out of the backfield. He advances for a first down to the 37 before he stopped by DJ Lynch. That's Spencer Tread Treadwell, who is the son of the former head coach, Don Treadwell. You see Austin Gary know where to go with the football, finds his running back in the flat, open, and see if he steps out of bounds there. Very close. Close, I don't think he did. Got up positive yards, though. That's what they need to do. First down, Red Hawks from their 37. Coomer incomplete at the 42 yard line looking for Rokeem Williams Cameron trust covering Williams there second down like that play goal by uh, Mike Bath again getting aggressive on first down taking a shot down the field off a little play action he's really it was great talking to him the other day about how he's kept things positive how he's proud of the way this football team especially the senior class has handled this whole season the fire another head coach uh, the inability to put the wins on the board, uh, but they have not stopped playing hard. They have not stopped working with a great attitude. That's Treadwell avoided one tackler in the backfield. It does make positive yardage, gain of two, stopped by DJ Lynch and Brian Thomas. You know, Spencer Treadwell had to be in a bit of an awkward position when his father was fired as the head coach here in his third season. That came after their loss to Central Michigan. And the near side, and the catch is made by Jenkins, and he has a first down and into Bowling Green territory at the 46-yard line, a 15-yard pickup. Look at the one-handed catch. Ball thrown behind him. And that's Jenkins. Wow, great focus, great concentration. At two Sports Center top 10 nominee catches already tonight from the Miami wide receivers on their first two possessions. Jenkins, another South Carolinan, and Camden, South Carolina. With the run, where did Coomer step out? They're going to mark him out. At the 38, and Paul Swan there running with him, the middle linebacker. And Coomer shown he can run with the football as well. Just a quarterback sweep out to the right, get the lead blockers out in front of him. Gained seven yards, second down at three, and now a flag. Do they have too many men in the huddle? Illegal yep. substitution, 12 men on offense, five yard penalty, still second down. So they get five of those yards right back with the penalty. And one of the challenges that Mike Bath has one they're a very young football team so handling the substitution the switch complete change in offenses from a triple option football team to more of a spread quarterback centered uh, offense multiple in what they do uh, he's trying to find the common denominator between the two and this team's done a nice job picking it up running with it Coomer Advances near the first down, 36 yard line. A nice block from his tight end, Dustin White. Is that a design, design draw play there for the quarterback? Yeah, that's a big part of what they do. One, the quarterback power read game, quarterback counter game. Third and short, right to the line. Another snap, Coomer. Oh, the keeper has the first down to the 35. Stopped by Lynch. Needed a yard, instead picked up two to move the chains. Drew Coomer. Well, the encouraging thing about this, look, this is a match number one defense, and they're moving the ball against them. The thing is, now they start getting this green zone, approaching the red zone. Can they stay efficient with the football? Coomer hands it off. Lynch with the tackle. 
Treadwell for five yards. Well, we mentioned that Austin Boucher, their starting quarterback, the torn ACL last week, finishing his season. And we also said that Gearing and Coomer had come in and played sporadically. But combined between them coming into this game, David, they had thrown a total of 16 passes on the season, those two. Well, and that happens, too, when you're on the triple option as well. But uh, right now, they're going to get their shot to find out what they can do and see where this program's going to go in the future. Treadwell. Up to the 26 yard line halted there by Paul Swan four yard pickup. Just stop. So two minutes to go in this first quarter a third down and one upcoming for the Red Hawks. Eleventh play of this drive coming and he lost the football Coomer able to scoop it up but then down back at the 34. And these are the things that young football teams do teams that are 0 and 8 to again third down and short the sticks are in their favor and they come they have an unforced error offensively. The sack on the first possession now the fumbled uh, snap in exchange with the quarterback. Well, they Looks are going like to he got the ball cleanly, I guess. Yeah, it looks like he just dropped it. They're going to attempt a 50-yard field goal. Caleb Patterson, as long this year, is a 52-yarder against Akron back on October 19th. Out of the hole to Coomer. It has the distance, and he got it. Caleb Patterson from 50 puts Miami on the board, making it officially a 51-yarder. Patterson knocks it through, sneaking it inside that left upright at 7 3. Coomer, one of the quarterbacks for Miami, maybe feeling a little bit better, David, since uh, his kicker bailed him out. P Patterson with the 51 yard field goal, but still a couple of late miscues on each of the first two drives. Well, actually, where it's happening at that end of the field, too, you start getting in the green zone in field goal range. You can't take a sack to move your team away from points or the potential points of a field goal. And there it is a fumbled snap or bobbled uh, the football. Uh, fortunately, they're able to kick the 50 yard field goal.
Mason Krasinski to kick off for Miami. Ronnie Moore, John Jordan Hopgood back deep for Bowling Green. From the one and then tumbling down at the 13 yard line is Ronnie Moore. Well, the ESPNU has a doubleheader at college football Saturday first at four. It's an ACC contest as the Wolfpack going to pick up their first conference win of the season. They face the Blue Devils. And then at eight, we bring you a battle in the Mountain West between the Aggies and the Rebels. ESPNU's college football Saturday at four and eight on ESPNU. Both games also live on Watch ESPN. Miami with a field goal on that last possession. Here we are, Bowling Green playing their ninth game of the season. That's the first field goal, successful field goal, that Bowling Green's defense has allowed all season, David. Remarkable this late in the season. Ronnie Moore across the 20, through the 23 yard line, stopped by Wes Williams. You know, you look at this Bowling Green offense, too, they're very multiple in what they do. Uh, from the misdirection, the screen game, that time a tunnel screen to Ronnie Moore. Uh, they're trying to find ways to get him the football in space because he's so explosive on the outside. With him and Travis Green, they have two guys that can make a difference. And the other wide receivers are big, tall targets that fight for the ball in the air. Picked up nine on first down, so second and short. Under 15 seconds to go in this first quarter. Green has the first down. Tumbles forward to near the 27 yard line. They'll stop the clock momentarily to move the sticks. We may have just seen our final play of the first quarter. Yep, Bowling Green will walk to the sideline. Joplin with a touchdown reception. Miami with the 51 yard field goal. We'll head to the second, 7 3 Falcons. National championship implications and the pride of two perennial powers on the line in primetime. Fifth ranked Stanford hosts number three Oregon this Thursday at 9 Eastern on ESPN. Big Thursday nights. Just a couple nights away. We begin the second quarter from here at Oxford, Ohio. A Mac battle between Bowling Green and Miami. Mark Neely along with David Diaz and Fonte and our ESPNU crew. Glad to, glad to have you with us. 
Running right. Ronnie Moore up to the 38 yard line. Pulled down by Tyler Tucker, an 11 yard gain. First down. Or a freshman out of Sanford, Florida. True freshman. Very high on him with his speed and playmaking ability. Johnson fakes the handoff to Green. His pass to the sideline is caught. That's Heath Jackson. The mark out at the 47 yard line. Eight of nine, second down and one. And you again, you see how accurate Matt Johnson is with the football. I mean, he turns his back to the wide receiver off the play action fake. He comes out just throwing a fastball out towards the sideline. It's an interesting look, by the way. Of course, he's right handed, so he's got the right arm completely covered, but the left arm bare. On a night uh, probably in the low 50s now. And a whistle right at the snap with the flag down. Ball start. Offense, number nine. Five yard penalty remains. Second down. It's wide receiver Sean Joplin, and that's the first only green penalty of the game. Well, that cost him five and turns a second and one into a second down and six. to the sidelines quick look but Johnson ready hands off to green avoids one tackler but then is brought down at midfield it's a first down run Travis green Mitch winners with the tackle they had a chance to get him or about a, only a one or two yard gain you'll see the edge pressure going to come off this edge here again Miami Ohio is going to bring the pressure the guard will kick it out and then watch the missed tackle right there by Kent Kern, middle linebacker, had one arm trying to bring him down. Nice way of dealing with the pressure Miami, Ohio was bringing from the field. Nine yard run, first down at the 49 yard line of Miami. Flag down, Johnson steps up, throws across the middle, a completed pass at the 46 yard line, but stopped there. Is Green out of the backfield. Chris Wade, the strong side linebacker with the tackle, but here's the call on the penalty against the Miami defense. Offside, defense number nine, five yard penalty, repeat, first down. And apparently, defensive end Wes Williams had up off sides from the neutral zone. That's a five-yard penalty. It's first and five. So it becomes first and five. Two minutes gone here in the second quarter. 7-3 Bowling Green leading on a Joplin touchdown catch. Tighten up the formation. And now Bowling Green, some confusion, and they'll call a timeout. So we'll break as well with 12:49 left till halftime. Falcons seven, Red Hawks three.
The Mid-American Conference from Oxford, Ohio tonight. Early in the second quarter, the Falcons leading Miami 7-3. And Bowling Green, the first and five from the 44-yard line of the Red Hawks. After Bowling Green uses their first timeout of this game. Johnson with a lot of time finds a wide open Joplin at the 30 makes a move to the 26 and then is swarmed under there. Another first down for the Falcons Joplin with a touchdown catch earlier in this game there he's stopped by cornerback Keith Harding. Well great job protection by the offensive line and running back again off play action. Now you see the wide receivers working the triangle there to coming back on the curl. Open as the defensive back falls down Joplin is. 19 yard gain first down at the 25 yard line of the Red Hawks. Bowling Green with a win tonight becomes bowl eligible. Where's a big game tonight opposite us on ESPN 2 in the back east division between Buffalo and Ohio. Johnson flushed out. Is that a catch? No incomplete. At the 20 yard line in and out of the hands of Ryan Burbrink. On the way they had uh, pass attempt from Johnson. And I tell you what, that looked very close to being a fumble, didn't it? A catch and a fumble. They had some drops last week. That ends a string of six pass completions in a row for Johnson. By the way, that uh, Buffalo and Ohio score scoreless after one quarter up in Buffalo tonight. Travis Green finds a crease inside the 20, stopped at the 19-yard line by Bryson Albright. And you see, Travis Green is not a big guy, 5'10, 180 pounds. But he runs so much better between the tackles than you would think. You think of him just a speed guy, but he has great patience, allows his blocks to develop in front of him, and the point of contact, he does a nice job of lowering his pads. Six carries for 53 yards right now for Travis Green. There's a third and three. The bowling Green on the season came in at 49%, one for one tonight. Johnson first down at the 10 yard line Ryan Burbrink 21st catch of the season for Burbrink in his first of the night a gain of eight we see Matt Johnson too. look at his ability to move within the pocket know he's going to take the hit alter his delivery and still be accurate with the football those are things that he shows on tape over and over again his ability to improvise and create with the football. First and goal Falcons they lead it 7 3 under 11 minutes to go in this second quarter. Green. Wrapped up from behind by Wes Williams and he's going to lose a little bit on that one. Good play by Williams the senior out of Houston Texas. His dad Stan played linebacker at Texas Tech. He's one of the veteran guys on the Miami of Ohio defense. That's really done a pretty darn good job this year too. The offense just hasn't really helped them out much. They continue to play hard. They do a nice job attacking. Play fake. Johnson looks right, left. Now taken off, but Wes Williams brings him down right near the line of scrimmage. Another nice play by Wes Williams. Well, nice play, great effort again of refusing to stay blocked. He gets cut block by Travis Green. And he's going to find his way to get back to his feet. You'll see him right here coming off the corner there. He's one on one with the back. He's going to get cut. Watch him fight, get back to his feet, and then get back right after the quarterback, Matt Johnson, gets sacked. Third and goal from the 11 yard line. Johnson lets it go to the back of the end zone. Burbrink juggled. They're calling it a touchdown. I'm anxious to see this one again, though, David. Let's take a peek. 
If it holds an 11 yard touchdown catch. And you'll see. Burbrink. Bobble bobble. Foots in. I don't uh, think he has control of the football. I don't think so either. Let's see if they're going to. Take a look at this. This should come back. Don't I don't think that's a catch. Yeah, don't take a look at this one. But even more impressive, you see Matt Johnson again with someone in his face, alter his delivery, and again just throw an accurate football to the back of the end zone. Well, the ruling on the field is a touchdown, but from what we saw there, David, there looks to be enough video evidence to overturn this, and if they do, it would be fourth down at the 11 yard line. See the ball couldn't have thrown it any better, but it's bobbled, bobbled. He does not have control of it. I think they got to overturn this. Bill Simons is our replay official tonight. He's taking a look at this. And from what we can tell, this should be overturned. Spurbrink doing a good job to the official, selling them football, trying to sell it. Right. Trying for his second touchdown catch of the season, but should be coming off the board. Which is the best look from back of the end zone? Doesn't have possession. Nope, not yet, not yet, not yet, not now. He probably does, but he's out of bounds. And his right foot's clearly on the white of the back of the end zone. It was Dayon Nunley on coverage. He's our best cover guy. 13 career interceptions. Yeah, the ruling on the field touchdown, but from what we have seen, this should be coming back and would set up fourth down, fourth and goal from the 11 yard line. And you would think a field goal opportunity at that point. After further review, the receiver did not have possession of the ball with a foot down. Therefore, it is an incomplete pass. It will be fourth down and goal from the 11 yard line on the left hash. Clock is correct. We'll start on my signal. Excuse me, on the snap. Mike Bath, I'll fire it up. Says, hey, we finally got a call going our way. <laughs> they just need the worm to turn for him. Guys, been young men been working hard. 29 yard attempt for Tyler Tate. Out of the hold of Alex Bear and the snap, Greg Hohenstein. Little trouble there getting it down, but Bear able to do so. And Tate knocks it through and makes it a 10 3 game. Burbrink's touchdown reception called back, and they settle for three.
Miami would love their first one of the season tonight, which if they're able to get it, would snap a 12-game losing streak dating back to last year. Bowling Green with a win becomes bowl eligible, and Buffalo and Ohio playing tonight. And Buffalo, they're scoreless early in the second quarter. Mac East Division. Bowling Green, as we say, David, controls their own destiny. They went out to play in the back title game. Yeah, they're good on both sides of the ball. They're just a solid football team all the way around. Well coached. But these kind of games are tough. You know, you're on the road. There's not a big crowd. So how do you just keep moving? How do you keep the energy up? That's the challenge that faces Bowling Green here tonight. McCray and Williams back deep to receive the Farinella kick. And McCray will take an E. Well, the ESPNU's college football coverage continues Thursday night with a matchup out of the Sun Belt. As the Trojans go on the road to score off against the Raging Cajuns, ESPNU's college football, Troy versus Louisiana Lafayette, Thursday at 7.30 here on ESPNU and also live on Watch ESPN. 9.15 to play, second quarter from Oxford, Ohio. Bowling Green leading Miami 10-3. And is Austin Gearing, one of the two quarterbacks playing now for the Red Hawks, along with Drew Coomer with Austin Boucher, who had been their starter throughout this season. Or is ACL in their last game ending his season? Little shovel pass to the tight end, Dustin White. Boy, the gain of four. They were crashing hard on the quarterback, and he just was able to flip that forward to White. Well, defensive coordinator Mike Elko is a guy that believes on pressuring on first and second down. They're trying to create negative yardage plays and attacking you in the backfield. Saw an example of that right there. But timing that blitz on the snap. Now's a good time for. Miami of Ohio start messing with their snap count. Spencer McKinnis now is the back, and he has his first carry of the night. McKinnis lost the football. Bowling Green recovers at the 37. That's Boo Boo Gates, and he advances inside the 30 to the 29. Well, a turnover, the fumble by McKinnis, the recovery by Gates. Falcons ball. And you'll see McKinnis right there coming up. Ball's tight to his body, but there goes Boo Boo Gates putting his arm right on the football. Pops loose. Boy, got to keep that football high and tight as Boo Boo Gates recovered the fumble. And knocked out. Then Gates picked it up. Well, even though the Red Hawks 0-8 coming into this game, they were a plus 5 in the turnover margin entering tonight. Turn it over for the first time there. Look like Fred Coppett now in the backfield. For the Falcons and Johnson harassed. Gets rid of it. Finds Jackson. Heath Jackson out of bounds inside the 20 at the 19. Wes Williams all over and this Johnson. Is, and this is an area too where Bowling Green has struggled protecting their quarterback. Even as athletics Matt Johnson is doing, you see his ability to throw the ball under duress and get it downfield. Uh, but I tell you what, they came this game with 21 sacks, and that's with a guy that's very mobile and avoids a lot of pressure. So it's been an issue for Bowling Green. 11 yard gain, first down, Falcons. The 18 of the Red Hawks. Johnson hands off. This is Coppett. Coppett inside the 10 and carrying the pile all the way down near the five. Fred Coppett, he's a freshman out of Fort Lauderdale. St. Thomas Aquinas High School, one of the top high school programs, not only in Florida, but in the nation as far as high school football. You'll see uh, Fred Coppe, he's got a hole he could drive a truck through. The offensive line just collapses the left side of that defense, getting up on the second level, and that's Max Bear, the tight end. Alex Bear, the tight end, getting up there as well. First and goal from the six. Johnson running himself. Spun around a couple of times. Rolled down about the three by Kent Kern. Four yard run for the back Johnson, which that's the element, quite frankly, that they didn't have with Matt Schiltz, isn't it, David? Where now Johnson not only can run a little bit, but can extend plays. Yeah, it opens up their whole quarterback run game part of their offense. He has the ability to extend plays. And, and, and I've been impressed with how he just moves within the pocket. 
Out of the eye formation here, Houston, the tailback. He has seven rushing touchdowns. He's six feet tall, 260 plus pounds, and they have used him in these goal line situations to do this right here. Get in the end zone. Eighth touchdown of the year for freshman William Houston. Well, there's a good reason why he's in there down those short yardage and goal line situations. Look at the job the offensive line does though as well. Again, and usually down the goal line, they've got one guy that's unblocked and the running back has to win that battle. That's one thing William Houston's done as well as anybody. Close to not making it over the goal line there, but touchdown for Houston and out after just a four play drive. After the fumble from McGinnis, they turn it into a touchdown, and Tate knocks through the extra point. It is 17-3, Bowling Green. 6:45 left till halftime. Now the McGinnis fumble got this rolling, David, for Bowling Green. Gates with the return. Houston. Taking it to the end zone, Another battle in the back East Division tonight over on ESPN 2. Brandon Oliver with a touchdown run, and Buffalo has scored first tonight. They are hosting Ohio. First place on the line in the back East Division. Here, Bowling Green. Quick touchdown after the Miami turnover. Cray's going to take it out from a yard deep. Avoided one tackler at the 10, now coming to the near side, and he's taken down at the 13 yard line by Boo Boo Gates, who said his name a lot tonight. Two big games with postseason implications, highlighting a college football doubleheader on ABC at 3.30. Two teams looking to stay alive in the Legends Division square off in the big house. Will Polini's court Oscars take on the Wolverines. They haven't lost at home under Brady Hoke. And at eight, Brian Kelly's Fighting Irish look to keep their BCS hopes alive with a win over Paul Chris Panthers. College football on ABC Saturday. Bo Pelini in Nebraska getting that last second victory over Northwestern. And Michigan got throttled by Michigan State, making a statement out there. It's a pitch to Treadwell, weaving through traffic. Flag. He's down at the 22. The flag came in the vicinity of the tackle. Tackled by Gates. 
Nice run by Spencer Treadwell. There's some hard fought yardage. Let's see if it's going to hold. An eight yard game, but he ran about 30 yards. Holding. Offense, number 80. 10 yard penalty. Repeat. First down. And they got one of the wide receivers, David Frazier, for a hold very late in that play. And David Frazier was was working hard on that play. His hands were just outside, and you'll see the jersey being pulled right here. The officials are going to see that hands outside, grabbing jersey and shoulder pad. Got to get him up inside the framework of the body. So from the spot of the foul, makes it a first and 12 with the ball back at the 11 yard line. Cooper's pass is completed. Kosak, Aaron Kosak, up to the 20 yard line. That's going to leave them a third and about three for a nine yard gain. Second down, that is. Under six minutes to go in the first half. Got three receivers to the right. And Nemec is the back. Coomer quickly throws. Scott down the sideline. First down before he's pushed out of bounds. Marking him out at the 31, Ryland Ward. Nice job by Drew Coomer again to recognize pressure. He's going to see it come off the edge and throw his bubble screen outside on the perimeter. Here's the pressure coming down right here. He's going to throw the bubble on the outside, avoid the pressure, and they get the nice matchup. They get three on two at the top of their screen, and they win the numbers game. Might have been a little bit of a late push there by Ward, but no flag. First down. Trying to set up that screen here on the other side to Scott, and that one though much better defensively read by Bowling Green and Paul Swan again to two. You see Dewan Scott too. He's not going to read the blocks of his wide receivers out there. He's going to have the leverage on the wide receiver. You see the blocks are going. They've got the outside number pinned. He's got to stay outside where the green grass was. Second down and eight. Empty backfield again. Three receivers to the right. This is gearing in the game now, and his pass is caught by Scott. But where he steps out, several yards shy of the first down at the 36-yard line, three-yard gain. Well, Dewan Scott's—he's a junior now. He's got to know where the sticks are. He had plenty of room, but just high, low, and the flat defender out there. He was wide open. Had a chance to pick up a few extra crucial yards. Up tempo on third down now. And third and five. Gearing in trouble, and he's brought down at the 35. DJ Lynch. Lynch, the leading tackler for Bowling Green. Fourth down. And the Red Hawks will punt. Uh, that's a tough situation. I know you're trying to work both quarterbacks, but. Your one quarterback has something going, and you bring in the other one on third down. It's kind of tough and ask him to make a throw when he hasn't been in rhythm and sequence of those downs. Zach Murphy to punt. Ryan Burbrink back at the 23 yard line. Pretty good punt from Murphy, taken at the 26 by Burbrink. Swarmed under at the 31. 39 yard punt with a five yard return. 336 to go.
Life as a quarterback, uh, of course, is uh, you know, it's really like an all-day job. Well, one of the things I've really been impressed with Derek about is, uh, one, he's had all the natural talent. Uh, but to me, what sets him apart is, is his work ethic and preparation. My goal is to out-prepare not only every quarterback, but every player in the nation uh, at all times. I try and learn personnel. You know, who do we want to throw at? You know, what, who, how do we want to pick up their blitzes and their pressures? All that stuff is what I do on my own time. When we get into the meetings, uh, you know, as, as a group with coaches, with the coaches, we talk about what plays we're going to run and how we're going to beat, you know, the schemes that they run. All access with Fresno State. That's coming up at the half on the college football halftime report. And East Shroff, Tom Luganville, Matt Millen, and Matt Stinchcomb. They're in the studio. They'll preview also the Oregon Stanford matchup for Thursday, then LSU, Alabama. And that all-access look at Fresno State that's coming up at the intermission. That's quite the crew they got going on there. Millen and Stitchcomb with, with Lugs. The heavy hitters. Yeah. Johnson just gets rid of it. Well, if you're bowling green here, David, I assume you're thinking, hey, another seven, and if it's not the, the knockout punch, it would be pretty close. Matt Johnson tonight. Near 90 yards passing through the air and one TD to Joplin. And that third score is kind of a magic number. Kind of changes how the other team has to play a little bit. Look at the box here. Green running. Off left tackle with a spin to the 37 yard line. Six yard gain. Bring up the third and four. The tackle there by the quarterback, Keith Harding. There were 10 guys in the box there. Bowling Green still ran the football and picked up positive yards. Nice job by the offensive line. Over 100 rushing yards now for the Falcons. Bowling Green does have two timeouts remaining. Under three minutes to play in this first half. Hopgood is the back on third down and four. Two receivers to each side for Johnson. Bear, the tight end, has the first down to the 46. Eight yard gain. Johnson's pass. Tackle for Burris. To Kevin Collins. He's an impressive player, that tight end, Alex Bear. Yeah, he is. He's just going to hit you up, knows exactly the first down marker is, and Johnson finds him. Johnson a completion to midfield keeping his feet there Burbrink stumbled a little bit after making the grab but he's to the 45 of Miami before stopped by Heath Harding. Another first down. Clock will restart two and a half minutes to go. Hop good. To the 36 tackle for. Dayon Nunley. Eight of eight, right back to the line come the Falcons. Bowling Green still two, two timeouts left. Underneath, out of the backfield. Hop good. He has a first down inside the 30, tackled by Kent Kern, and they're methodically moving down the field here with two minutes, just over two minutes to go. I like the tempo they're using. They got their offense going. Johnson's pass is caught at the 25 yard line. Immediately tackled there. Hopgood, or Jackson, I should say. Keith Jackson with the reception. Second down and five. Hand off Jordan Hopgood. Battling his way across the 20 to the 19 yard Jordan line. And he may have another first down before being stopped by Kent Kern. Well, Jordan Hopgood is a 220 pound back that gives him a little muscle up inside on that inside zone play. Timeout called by Miami. First charge, timeout of the half. Miami, 30 seconds in length. So Miami uses the timeout. 126 left in the half. Well, our country's finest servicemen hit the hardwood at the All Military Classic on ESPNU. At one, it's Army versus Air Force. And then at three, the Citadel takes on 
Virginia Military Institute. Coverage of the All-Military Classic begins Friday, November 8th at 1 on ESPNU and also live on Watch ESPN. Hard to believe college basketball season, the exhibition season has been going on for just a little bit, but now the regular season will get going. Matt Johnson, the quarterback for Bowling Green, 12 of 16, 120 yards and a touchdown pass to Joplin. And he's been very accurate with the football. He's throwing it on the move from the pocket, extended plays. Ninth play of this drive coming up. Johnson's pass is caught and into the end zone. Touchdown. Bear. First touchdown catch of the year for the Bowling Green tight end. Again, nice little play. You're going to see the tight end right here. Barry's going to come up. He's going to stick it, and then he's going to go. And watch as he uncovers. And Matt, John, uh, Matt Johnson knows exactly where to go with the football. Little stick nod, and then he's going to go. He's up into the end zone. Point after for Tyler Tate. Out of the hole to Bear. He just picked up his first touchdown of the year. Puts down the clean hole. Knocked through by Tate. 24-3 Bowling Green. And Dave Clawson, the head coach of Bowling Green in his fifth season, his team control their own destiny. If they win out, because they have games upcoming against Ohio and Buffalo, they will win the East. Buffalo and Ohio battling tonight in Buffalo over on ESPN2 right now. And I talked to Coach uh, Dave Clawson before the game. I said, well, how's your team responded? You know, a tough loss against Mississippi State at Mississippi State. Another tough loss against Toledo. He goes, hey, look, we know we're a good football team. We were in both those football games, had a chance to win them. Everything we work for in the offseason and training camp is still there before us, and that's to play in Detroit in the MAC championship game. So they have Ohio coming up next week in Eastern Michigan and finish at Buffalo. Buffalo right now up 7 0 on Ohio in the second quarter in that game on ESPN 2. Bowling Green, their last MAC title was 1992. They also won it in 91. That's when Gary Blackney was their head coach. Since that time, Urban Meyer was the head coach for Bowling Green for a couple of years in 01 and 02. Lawson's in his fifth season. He replaced Greg Brandon, who was around from 03 to 08. Only Green played in the Military Bowl last year at RFK Stadium in Washington. Beaten by David Diaz Infantes, alma mater, San Jose State, 29-20. From the three, McCray. 20-25-30. Hit from behind at the 35 yard line. Nice return from McCray. Chris Pullman was the one that came from behind to knock him down after a 33 yard return. All right, we'll see what uh, Mike Bath has going on here. Two timeouts. Two timeouts left. Chance to go a little up tempo. They come out with Austin Geary. Come out, empty set with three receivers to the left. Rolling that way, Gearing's pass right to midfield. Is that going to say it is a catch for Kosak? 14-yard gain. First down. And then Kosak to the second catch. He's going to move the pocket and flood that side of the field. Substitution, late substitution coming in. That's Frazier, and does that cause them to burn a timeout here? That's the explanation. Don Willard, our referee. Ruling on the field is a completed pass. Plays under further review. And that's the reason for the stoppage. They wanted to want to make sure that that was a legitimate catch for Kosak. Let's. Take a look from this angle. He's, he's got the ball cradled. It never moves. Never comes in contact with the ground. 
from that his, angle looks like a good catch and his body is in bounds. If it stands Kosek's second catch of the night. After further review the rolling on the field is confirmed. The game clock will start on my signal. So the catch stands. Miami didn't use a timeout. They still have two remaining, but the clock will restart. See the quarterbacks for Miami tonight. Coomer who's in there now, six of ten. But gearing five of five. 36 yards. Coomer hit as he throws and incomplete. Pressure off the edge from DJ Lynch. Second down, Mike Elko, defensive coordinator, is going to bring pressure. And what a move by DJ Lynch. Spin move off the right tackle to get the hit and hit and affect, affect the throw. Here comes the blitz right up the middle, and Coomer is sacked. Back at the 37 by the middle linebacker, Paul Swan. And it's double barrel blitz right in both A gaps. Both guys coming up here. They're going to pick up one and let the other go. And they release the back. The man's free. The left side of the line did not squeeze down. If you're going to let someone go, it has to be the guy farthest from the edge, farthest from the quarterback, never in the A gap. Paul Swan with the sack. Nine yard loss on that sack. And Bowling Green uses a timeout. That's the third sack tonight for the Falcons defense. First of the year for Paul Swan. Came in, their second leading tackler on the season with 43 tackles. Well, our BCS standings, of course, Alabama top the BCS standings. Florida State and Oregon have kind of flip flopped a few times, and now Florida State at the two spot. Baylor's at six undefeated, 7 0. They have a big game coming up Thursday with Oklahoma. Oklahoma is 10th in the BCS standings. <laughs> Team from the back crashed that BCS party last year. Northern Illinois threatening to do it again. Coomer hit hard as he throws, but a completed pass. At the 44 yard line of Bowling Green to David Frazier. That was Paul Swan coming late, attacking the perimeter. Puts his helmet right in the chest of Coomer. He's able to complete the throw. Miami will use a timeout, so they'll have one remaining. He is a little shy of the first down after that catch, Frazier, so it's a fourth and three. And with 21 seconds left here and at this position of the field. Looks like they're going to go for it. But if they do. Risk giving it back to Bowling Green with some time left. ESPNU has a doubleheader in college football Saturday at four. ACC contest NC State and Duke and then at eight. Out of the Mountain West Utah State. And surprising UNLV. ESPNU's college football Saturday at 4 and 8 Eastern on ESPNU. Both games also live on Watch ESPN. Rumors the quarterback here on a fourth down and three. They are 7 of 18 on fourth down this year, the Red Hawks, 39%. And the play is dead, but. Nonetheless, they'll turn it over on downs. Taylor Royster with the tip. That was on the field. set and running the other the way. Complete forward pass. First down. So Bowling Green, Green has a timeout left with 17 seconds to go. And you'll see double A gap blitz again. Cross dialogue up the middle. They're bringing pressure. He's got one chance. It's a forward pass incomplete, but they turn it over on downs. Great call into that pressure when it's on the line. You see the A gap pressure. He's had no chance to get it to his tight end. On the shovel pass. Too much penetration by Bowling Green. Well, you have 17 seconds left here, David, for Bowling Green and a timeout. You, you expect them certainly to take a, a, a quick shot here? I think they'll, they'll try to move the ball. <laughs> They've got a quarterback who's got great command of their offense. They've got a timeout. They'll take a couple shots. And good field position at the 44. 
Will the game clock operator please reset the game clock to 18 seconds? 18 seconds, please. I tried to sneak a second off the clock there, but the officiating crew. Thank you. Thank you. Eyed, noticed. They put that second back on. Twenty four three Bowling Green. Joplin a touchdown catch. Bear has one. Houston a touchdown run. Johnson. Like he was winded up. Does so and throws a strike caught at the 38 yard line. They'll use a timeout with nine seconds left. Completion to Burbrink. 18 yard gain. Well they're not going to use that timeout. They're going to. Save it. Here's Johnson down to four seconds and he's tackled at the 43 and with one second left they stop the clock. Bryson Albright bringing down the quarterback. Were you surprised they didn't use the timeout to stop the clock before the play? Yeah I think they would there it is again. Now you're you're really playing against the clock here. You can't take a sack. You got to throw the ball away. So now they do use their final timeout, the Falcons. And one chance to throw towards the end zone. Line of scrimmage is the 41 of Miami. Three receivers to the right, including Bear, the tight end. Johnson, time runs out, and he is sacked in the half back at the 49 by Bryson Albright. Third sack of the season for Albright. For Bowling Green, Matt Johnson. They have the 24 to 3 lead. We're coming up after the break. It's Anish Shroff and the guys. They'll be in the studio for the college football halftime report. Again, here at the intermission from Oxford, Ohio, it's 24-3. Punch the stopwatch, 75 yards. 
for the Baylor touchdown. Quarterback keeper, plenty of room, and he outruns the entire Virginia defense. Plenty of time, throws downfield, Whitfield. Did he catch it? Yes, he did. What a catch by Cody Whitfield. Touchdown, Cardinal. Throws downfield, and it is caught for a touchdown by Jarvis Landry. Holy cow, that was acrobatic. On the get, Yeldon, nice hole into the secondary. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Welcome into halftime here. We've got our experts panel, the big weekend of college football coming up. Right across from me is ESPN College Football Insider Brett McMurphy. Alongside him, former NFL All-Pro Matt Millen. To my immediate right, we've got former first-round draft choice in Georgia offensive lineman Matt Stinchcomb. I am Tom Luganville. As I mentioned, a big slate of games coming up this weekend, starting Thursday. Oklahoma, Baylor in Waco. Baylor's been fantastic at home. The test of the season starts in the next four weeks this Thursday night in Waco for the Baylor Bears. You look at Oklahoma, they lead the conference in time of possession. You think Blake Bell is going to have to step up his play because in this ball game, guys, they might try to contain. They can only hope to disrupt this Baylor offense because they're not going to slow them down for a full four quarters. Eventually, they'll start points. Yeah, completely agree with you there. And I think yeah, keep this in mind with Oklahoma. They're a better team now than when we saw them early in the season. So they have gotten better, and I think they're more comfortable with what they're doing offensively, but they're going to have to score points. I know Matt's thrilled about this. Floyd Casey Stadium will be tarpless. No tarps. <laughs> biggest game in Baylor's history. They've won 11 in a row since losing to OU last year. This is a big statement game for them. They haven't played anybody, anybody yet. It gets a lot more interesting down the road. Can they keep winning? And if they get some help with some losses, can Baylor be in Pasadena? Re replacing the tarp with cardboard cutouts or real people? Real people, right? Real people. Oh, yes. there we go. That's even better. That, absolutely. All right, in the Pac-12, you've got Oregon and Stanford. Stanford, of course, with one loss versus Utah. The Ducks on the road. How they fare against, I think, not quite the Stanford team we've seen the last couple of years. And the defense that I believe is not getting enough attention is the one wearing green. So much of that attention is placed upon Stanford. You like Stanford, Brad? I'm the only one here. I like Stanford. I think they're going to do a lot of the same things they did last year. They held Oregon to 14 points last year. If they can control the line of scrimmage, if they can shrink the game, they'll shrink it. They'll shrink it. I think they got a shot. They only run 64 plays per game, third fewest in FBS. So if they can keep the ball away from Marcus Mariota, who's been outstanding the Heisman front runner right now they got a shot here's the thing I I, I can buy that argument because I've watched but. the Stanford team it, well I just think that I think this is not the same team as it was a year ago and so they don't have the same personnel that they did a year ago and what they did inside was they just tried to cover off inside almost in like a like a like kind of like a bear front what they did try to take that inside zone away and they were successful at it the difference I think this year is I agree with you. With Oregon, I think Oregon is more physical up front in their defensive side. And I think offensively, I think they're, if you can be, I think they're a little bit more diverse than they were a year ago. They don't completely rely on just one or two guys. They have a myriad of guys who can make plays from all over the place. And, of course, it's led by Mariota. Yeah. Take. I like them. I, I think the Ducks, I think, win going away in this ball game, And I think part of it is, in the years past, what makes Stanford, I think, competitive versus the Ducks is that they're distinct from most of the rest of the Pac-12. Right. And so as difficult as it's been to prepare for Oregon because of how fast they play, you know, Stanford, you mentioned it, 64 plays a game. They're entirely different propositions, so you have to shift gears if you're the Oregon Ducks. The problem is, is I don't think Stanford is as proficient as they have been in that physical mm -hmm. style of play, possessing the football. They're good. I just don't think that they're good enough to derail what Oregon is doing so far this season and ultimately what I think will end up being an undefeated Duck team. So much attention placed on Oregon and Stanford, Oklahoma and Baylor. Normally, the last few years, this matchup here in the SEC, LSU and Alabama, would have taken up all of the attention and all of the exposure of the weekend as LSU on the road in Tuscaloosa to face off against an Alabama football team that to me is really intriguing on offense because I think the perception is that they're this physical, grind it out, run football team, which at, at their core they are, but they don't look like that anymore. They, they're in spread sets now and they're in the pistol and they're doing, they just have a very unique dynamic to them. 
And fellas, if I'm if I'm LSU, I'm worried about this game because Alabama is peaking at the right time. And over the last couple of weeks, LSU's kind of gone off the track a little bit. Yeah, and in order for them to have any kind of success, that offensive line is going to have to play their best game. Jeremy Hill is going to have to control the football a little bit, and then they've got to protect Mettenberger. Mettenberger, he's the dead key mm -hmm. because he's the guy who can switch that whole thing. If both teams play their best game, I think, I think uh, LSU has a shot to beat them. Sure, sure. Well, I thought what you mentioned earlier is that if Alabama is more diverse from a formation standpoint, they've got more flexibility in their personnel, that's even more challenging for an LSU team that's had difficulty lining up at times because of some of the new faces right. they've got specifically at the second level of the linebacker position. Yeah, it's been a little bit more difficult for LSU to get rolling. Well, how about all access into the LSU program? We take you there with Kelly Hartung. We're outside the defensive meeting room where coordinator John Chavis and his staff have been on lockdown since before 8 a.m. this morning. We're told they will stay here until the team goes to practice at 3.30. Let's just hope there's a break for lunch in there somewhere. We're going to listen in as they game plan for Alabama. It's the number one team in the nation. You know, usually that team can run the football well, uh, play great defense, so we've got to be able to, to stop the run. At times, we'll be one-dimensional in the game. You know, we're going to run the ball. If you want to make us one-dimensional uh, and, and keep us from throwing, we'll run it. If you want to make us one-dimensional and make us throw it, because you take away the run, we really, I think Zach would agree, we don't care. We, we throw it 50 times, run it 50 times. You know, we feel like we can be successful either way. All Access Alabama LSU presented by Wells Fargo. Both programs will have our cameras on site 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time Friday on ESPNU. And when you come back... We'll take you all access. Fresno State and East Shroff will lead you into the Bulldog program. Derek Carr. And are they a BCS buster? Stay tuned. Fresno State quarterback Derek Carr puts his pants on just like the rest of us, one leg at a time, except he breaks records and wins games all the time. Carr this season has set the Fresno State mark for passing yards, passing touchdowns, and career completions. Had a banner night over against Nevada over the weekend, leading the Bulldogs to yet another win. Fresno State right now with a chance to be a potential BCS buster. They're one of the remaining unbeatens in all of college football, and our cameras had a chance to go all access with the dogs. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Go somewhere fast, yo. Our guys play with an energy. Uh, we talk about being fast, physical, and, and fanatical. Uh, I think when, when people watch us play, they see a team that plays with heart, that, that has a ton of fun, draws a lot of energy from our coaches, and, and I think is a great reflection of our coaching staff. And listen, right arm like Coach Early saying, but when you hit the blaster, cover the sum up. Okay, two hands through the blaster. Let's go. I remember, I got a bat. <laughs> Here we go. Come on, come on, come on. Your eyes up. Oh, good, good, get good. Through, get... Where your eyes at? Oh, right there. Got it, boy. 
Had a boy right there. I'm very uh, what's the thing I'm trying to say? Ugly, very ugly. I'm very attractive for here, but I'm very athletic and I'm. I'm See if I can get this on camera. Can My hairline, yeah, it's, it's far back. Camera? It's very far back. I got when the LeBron. I got seat. here, it was down there. I got the LeBron hairline. You know why his back's so far now? He's stressing me out. Go show this. <laughs> He's my guy. That's my guy. Vertical pass rush. Go. Rush, rush. Make me run all the way out here. I don't do anything. Why are you gonna call screens so I get out there and I don't even get the ball on my side? I told you to hurry up. We're waiting on you. That's a 50-yard run. Oh, that's spoken like a true alignment right there. I had to run this far. I had to do sleds. I didn't do sleds today. But you're still complaining about it. Not today. <laughs> let's go, Coach Northcross. Bring it up. Jay, Jay, Jay. Grab a hand. Jay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Bulldog boy. 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 Right here on ESPNU, of course, Thursday, big game out on the West Coast, Oregon and Stanford, both teams in the hunt for a Pac-12 title. Tom Luganbill and Matt Millen take you inside the film room when we come back to preview this game. Welcome into the film room alongside former NFL All-Pro Matt Millen. I am Tom Luganbill. We've got a tremendous matchup in the Pac-12 this Thursday night between Oregon and Stanford. And if disciplined and technique is a, is a staple of the Stanford defense, don't discount the Oregon Ducks because right now they're playing with great technique. And we've got some shots to show you here with their defensive front that are really impressive with how they go about business. Yeah, I mean, the first thing you see, Tom, right off the bat is look at their stance. Weights on the back, that means what they're doing is they're, they're uh, reading on the run. Mm -hmm. What reading on the run is, it doesn't take away your aggression, but you're letting them declare first and then you do that. The second thing you see is I like this. Hands and face is not the deal. Okay. It's face and hands, and that's a big deal. Let me tell well, you let's why. Let's talk about that real quick. So yeah. you come up to me, you say okay. face and hands first. Okay, this is what's being taught right. in college and uh -huh. high school a lot of times. They're going here first and then, then getting into right. a guy, okay? But really, it's almost all in one. It's your face and hands right. all the same. It's the same here time. to here, and you're sinking. And what you're looking for is to get a and shock. You stun him. And shock the guy. You want to okay. get his momentum stopped, and then you get the separation. This is done almost perfectly right here. Watch him get the separation. Mm -hmm. He's going to throw him to the side, disengage, and get in on a tackle. That's a thing of beauty. The third thing you're going to notice right away is they hold the edge. Right. That speaks to the discipline of scheme that's required in all defenses. They've been doing a good job of it. You them. force the ball back inside. And you talk about holding the edge and setting it. It's all about leverage, outside leverage, outside leverage. This has nowhere to go but in here. Exactly. He's coming. He's chasing down line. Very disciplined. This guy getting up the field is a big deal. That's called cutting off the offense. That's what you try to do. You try to force it back inside without losing your relationship to the other defenders. Correct. And that ends up being essentially your 12th man. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't allow that sideline to be your best friend. Oregon Stanford, it's Thursday night. Should be a doozy for the Ducks and the Cardinal, 9 p.m. Eastern.
little fireworks show here during the half. 24-3, Bowling Green leading Miami. Glad to have you with us here on a Tuesday night in early November from Oxford, Ohio. Mark Neely along with former NFL offensive lineman David Diaz and Fonte. The quarterback's obviously a key story in this game, but for Bowling Green, Matt Johnson, what did you think of his first half? Well, 14 of 18, a couple of touchdowns. He was just about perfect with the football. Uh, distributed the ball to a bunch of different wide receivers, took care of it, extended plays, all the things I saw on tape before. The guy's really shown he knows how to play this game. Five possessions in the first half for Miami. They wind up with three points on the field goal, but they had a couple of drives going, David, and just kind of self-destructed at the end of this. Yeah, unforced errors. Again, you're going to see taking a sack when you're in field goal range, something you can't do. Young quarterback's got to learn those lessons. And also now unforced error again, fumble, botch snap again on third down, not able to convert. And then a fumble again, right when they were getting the ball going. Look, they had a couple good drives going early in the game. Took some time off the clock, but it's been mistakes and unforced errors have been the difference in this football game. Look at the drive chart for the Red Hawks in their first possession. 11 plays, but wound up with a punt. And the field goal, their only points of the half. Fumble, punt, and turned it over on downs on their last possession of the first half. Well, the good news for Miami of Ohio is they look, they moved the football. Those first two possessions between the 20s, they were moving the ball, getting things going, running and throwing the football. They just haven't learned how to finish drives on not to beat themselves. And that's the difference between these two football teams right now. Matt Johnson's numbers, as you mentioned, 14 of 18 for 156 yards with a couple of touchdown passes. One of those to Sean Joplin, the other to the tight end, Alex Bear. And the Falcons will have the football to begin the second half. Mason Krasinski kicks off for the Red Hawks. Ronnie Moore back deep at his own five. Moore from eight yards deep in the end zone will not bring it out. Well, for the Falcons in the first half, their five possessions. They scored on their first four TD field goal touchdown touchdown and of course one of those they began at the Miami 29 after the uh, turnover the fumble from well, Miami. Yeah when you're three of four on third down they came in at almost 50 percent on third down that's an area where Matt Johnson just really excelled he knows where to go with the football and what to do with it and he protects it. So we begin the second half first down. Falcons from their 25, three receivers to the right. Two receivers, that is, to the right, one to the left. And hand off Green. He advances across the 30 to the 32 for gain of seven on first down. Tackled by defensive lineman Jimmy Ruscher. And Travis Green just shows great patience in that counter game again. It's a lot of misdirection. The offense is going to step to his left, comes back, and just follows those big offensive linemen. Nice patience for a guy that's a speedster. And rushes now for 66 yards. Saw the average over seven per carry. Another carry for Green. First down. To the 40-yard line. Wes Williams with the tackle. You saw him make a quick stop on a dive right where the marker was and then advanced another five. We're going to see this stunt right here and a linebacker come up and you're going to see Travis Green again. Just wait for the blocks to develop. They pick up the stunt, pick up the linebacker. And it's another good gain on first down. They're at the half at Buffalo. Buffalo leading Ohio 7-3. That's another key battle for the Mac East Division tonight over on ESPN2. Incomplete. The hands of Heath Jackson. Here on the coverage, Tyler Tucker, 38. So second down and ten.
Johnson's pass is picked off at midfield. The interception for Prashawn Dupuis, his second of the year. And you'll see again, they're playing nickel. You see Dupuis up top. He's showing press man. Now he's just going to fall off his receiver, read the quarterback's eyes, and undercut the football and make the INT. It's only the fourth interception on the year for Matt Johnson. And you saw Joplin fell down or slipped. So there's two TD passes now, one pick. 11 TDs to go with the four interceptions on the year. For Matt Johnson hearing the quarterback. Six yard gain stopped by Ted Ouellette. <laughs> Celebration there for Dupuis. Pick. That's what Miami needs. Trying to get back in this football game. Three receivers left. Gearing running it, and he has a first down all the way up near the 36 yard line. Seven yard gain for Austin Gearing. Picked up a nice block from the tight end, Dustin White. Yeah, that's the quarterback run game. They're going to kick out the end. Tight end's going to turn up, and Gearing knows exactly what to do with the football. That's what he brings to this offense, his ability to run with the football. And in between the tackles, 6'5", 220 pounder. First down, Red Hawks. This is their first possession of the half after Bowling Green turned it over. The pick by Dupuis, keeping Gearing, cuts back. Does make some positive yardage out of that. A couple of yards to the 34. He's tackled by Charlie Walker, one of the defensive ends. It's one of the ways they deliver the play call to the quarterback. But for you and me in the booth and those at home, that makes no sense at all, and that's just the way it's designed. <laughs> Code words up there yeah. telling you formation, personnel groupings. Here's the fly sweep by Frazier, but he is dropped for a loss. May have lost the football. He did, and it's recovered by the Falcons. Well, that fly sweep was stopped in the backfield and coughed up. Ryan Thomas recovers for Bowling Green. We'll take a look at it. You see Frazier. So it looks like his arm was going forward. See if we get another look at that. Yeah, he's trying to. Yeah, his arm is going forward. As Ted Ouellette brought the pressure. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. Play is under further review. Is there enough to overturn this that he was attempting a forward pass here? I think they're there. The arm motion was definitely going forward. This yeah. Looks like it could be overturned. Again, Miami, Miami of Ohio getting aggressive, trying to create an explosive play down the field. But you got to like the pressure the Bowling Green's defense brought on that play. Penetration kills those types of plays. That's one of those things when you coach up your players that run those gadget plays for you that look if it's not there tuck in and run. You don't want to risk turn over the football when you find yourself you know in positive territory. OK and now the fan at home may be asking David so I'll ask you with that fly sweep. Was that pass the first option or did it get bottled up to the point where he has the option to throw in the football there? Well, I think he has the option to throw in it too. It was obviously designed to do that. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down Bowling Green. Wow. Confirmed even. Surprising. So there was enough video evidence to confirm the call. That it was a fumble and not a forward pass attempt. Hmm. So the second Miami turnover of the game. They give it right back after Bowling Green turned it over on their first possession of the second half. 
screen. Nice open field tackle there by the quarterback Heath Harding. Picked up a yard. It's second down and nine. Look to the sideline for Johnson. Green cuts it back, stays on his feet, midfield. Tackled there as he crosses into Miami territory. Tries to burst. In the ball carrier. Well, he's got some nice moves. Well, for most guys that are considered speed guys, usually they don't have the patience to wait for the blocks to be set up. But Travis Green does a nice job of always following his blockers. He understands the scheme, and he's got the patience to let things develop before him. And once he, ha he has a vision, too, to see the scene when it opens up and get right through it. And he does a good job of that. Now Green's on pace to take a run at the single season rushing record, which is 1,444 yards for Bowling Green. Slant caught. Joplin. 42 yard line for six yards. And now you see Matt Johnson under center take a quick drop. One, two, three, throw the ball on time on the quick slant to the wide receiver. He, he's really, he's got all components to his game. They do a lot of different things offensively, different mesh points for the quarterback. And he, he, he rarely makes a mistake in that part of the game. Burbrink and Joplin are the receivers to the bottom of your screen. There's a flip. And Green takes off. First down inside the 30. Marked out of bounds at the 27 yard line run out by Deion Nunley. Watch this right here. Yard game. You'll see Matt Johnson again. He'll freeze and then flip. Now watch the job that Heath Jackson does outside blocking on the perimeter. That's what you got to have in this type of offense. You'll see Johnson too. He's just going to freeze. It takes a little bit of calmness and poise to freeze and hold it and believe that no one's going to be hitting you and flip it out to your running back. 13 carries, 103 yards now for Travis Green. Johnson chased. Finds the open man at the 25 yard line. Burbrink. Advances it all the way inside the 15 down near the 13 tackled by Heath Harding And once again, they're trying to take a shot down the field and now you'll see Johnson avoid the rush Extend the play and then calm under pressure find his outlet along the sideline and Burbrink See that's a clean sack right there by Kent Kern the linebacker thinks he has him think again First down, Bowling Green at the 12 of the Red Hawks. Tonight, they're four for four in the red zone. Green follows his block inside the five down near the three. Travis Green with the rush. Tackled by Kent Kern. Green having a nice night running the football. Yeah, does a nice job following his big offensive guard around there. Second down and one, and the keeper, Johnson, has the first down, so it'll be first and goal. Since it's first and goal inside the five, it's going to bring out William Houston. Picked up his eighth rushing touchdown of the season in the first half. We got Chris Pullman, number 42, at 6'1", 260 pounds, with the 260-pound running back. Houston stopped. He had a pretty good head of steam, but Bryson Burris stopped him at about the one and then had some help from some teammates. Well, I tell you what, this is what a strong safety is supposed to do. Look at that. With his feet, his hips, make full contact, wrapped his arms, and waited for the boys to rally around him. That's one on one right there, and he wins that battle. And that's a safety doing that on a 260 pound running back. Actually lost a little bit. Second and goal back at the two. 
Give him another chance and Houston right into the pile. He'll push it but. Will not make it into the end zone that time either. So it'll be third and goal to give it right back to him a third time. Look, he can't believe it either. He's used to scoring down there. But I tell you, this Miami of Ohio defense has really done a great job all season long of playing hard under some tough circumstances. They never give up, they play hard to the whistle. Well, Houston comes out, Travis Green comes back in. A third and goal from the one. Seven out of the nine plays on this drive have been kept on the ground. This time Johnson keeps it and he trots into the end zone for the touchdown. Fourth rushing touchdown of the year for Matt Johnson, the quarterback. Well, the 260 pounder couldn't get it into the end zone, but Johnson at 215 does. And you'll see him follow his center right there. He goes up, change the play, flips the side of it. And they're going to pull their center, and Johnson knows exactly who to follow. So a 10 play scoring drive that ate up over five minutes. Tyler Tate's extra point out of the hold of Alex Bear. Bowling Green with the commanding 31 to 3 lead with 7.04. Remaining in this third quarter. That's 14 points now off turnovers for Bowling Green. 31 3 Falcons. ESPNU College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Always one of a kind. Pleasant fall evening here in Oxford, Ohio. But not so pleasant for the home team, Miami. They're down 31 3. 24 unanswered points from Bowling Green in what was a 7 3 game. Falcons trying to keep destiny in their own hands. They can win out. They would be in the MAC championship game. Buffalo and Ohio playing tonight at Buffalo. Another key matchup in the MAC East Division that's going on on ESPN2 tonight. Anthony Farinella kicks off for the Falcons. Fred McRae back deep. McRae comes up to the nine. Cuts it outside. 20-25. Out near the 30. Pushed out by Will Watson. ESPNU's college football coverage continuing Thursday night. A matchup in the Sun Belt. The Trojans go on the road to square off against the Raging Cajuns. ESPNU's college football, Troy versus Louisiana Lafayette. Thursday at 7.30 on ESPNU. Also live on Watch ESPN. 
may have noticed the flag down on the return. Here's the call from Don Willard. After the play, unnecessary roughness, receiving team, number 27, 15-yard penalty, first down. With a personal foul against Terrell Jones. So that will partially reduce what was a pretty good return from McCray that time. It was kind of been the story for Miami of Ohio all night. You it know, they do something good and it's negated by an unforced error, a penalty, field position changes. The fifth penalty against the Red Hawks tonight. Scott on the catch, lost the football, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Boo Boo Gates. You were just saying. Another mistake. Third Miami turnover. Scott with the catch. I think it was Justin Ford that made the hit again on the slip screen outside. Attacked the wide receiver and forced the fumble. Boo Boo Gates. With the touchdown, Tyler Tate now comes on. To try to make it 31 unanswered points for the Falcons. Redshirt sophomore Tate does just that, and it's 38 to 3 Bowling Green. And now some pushing and shoving after the point after. The officials clean that up and send the teams to the respective sidelines with no flags being thrown. Or let's take a look. Timeout. All right, just timeout. No flag on that play. 6.49 to go, third quarter. Bowling Green 38, Miami 3. Fourteen points scored by Bowling Green in the last 15 seconds off the clock. And Boo Boo Gates, couple of fumble recoveries. That last one he just scooped up for a touchdown. And you'll see right here, Miami of Ohio has the advantage. It's three over three, but look at the depth of the third defender right there. What's going to happen is 39 Ford's going to defeat the block of the wide receiver, and that's going to cause a fumble again. They have the numbers, but wide receivers have to block in the perimeter screen game. That causes the turnover. Boo Boo Gates scoops and scores. 
Dante Taylor. AJ Greenwood back deep. Taken at the eight by Greenwood. Tripped up at the 24. So Miami begins. Their own 24 yard line, 25 yard line, and the quarterback be Drew Coomer. They will spot it at the 24. Cooper hands off to Treadwell. No gain. AJ Lynch, first one to stop him. Treadwell, who's a redshirt sophomore out of East Lansing, Michigan. And Dad Don and been the head coach here until being fired earlier this season. This is the fourth game for interim head coach Mike Bath. Wide open, Frazier. Taken down at the 31 yard line by Justin Ford. Mike Bath, who is also the offensive coordinator as well as the interim head coach, just 36 years old, was a quarterback here at Miami back in the late 90s. Bath had been a quarterback coach here. In fact, was instrumental in helping Zach Dysert last few years. Dysert is now the number three quarterback in the NFL with the Denver Broncos. Jenkins, the intended receiver there. That's incomplete. Aaron Foster covering for the Falcons. Fourth down. Now again, I think you and I, Dave, were surprised if you look at the score 9 3 Buffalo in the third quarter. Another big matchup in the back east. When we came to the walkthrough yesterday for Miami, we, we didn't really know what to expect. And when a team's 0 and 8, I think our suspicion was it was, was going to be pretty down, but it wasn't that way at all. It was very upbeat. Mike Bath had the team at a very good middle frame of mind. That was the first three and out, by the way, for either team tonight. That last possession there for Miami. And Burbrink returns it. Up near the 25 yard line. That is a 52 yard punt with an eight yard return.
visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Mid-American Conference football from Oxford, Ohio. Glad you could join us on this Tuesday night. Mark Neely along with David Diaz and Fonte and our ESPNU crew. 31 unanswered points for Bowling Green. They lead it 38-3 with just under five and a half minutes to play in this third quarter. Win tonight for the Falcons. They become bowl eligible. And also keep control of their own destiny in trying to make the MAC title game. Wes Williams brings down Fred Coppett. Bowling Green hasn't won a MAC title since 1992. Wes Williams have an outstanding night tonight. The guy has not stopped playing. He's got a motor making plays. Loss of a yard on the previous play. Second down and 11. Johnson gets rid of it. Cop it. To the 29 yard line for five yards. T.J. Williams with the tackle. Cop it comes out. Jordan Hopgood comes in at the tailback position for the Falcons. Johnson. Across the middle, and it's caught by Joplin, a first down up to the 45-yard line. Third and seven. Anderson with the tackle of Joplin, and on third and seven, he picks up 16 yards. Again, great protection by the offensive line. Matt Johnson's able to climb the pocket and throws a fastball to Joplin over the middle of the field late. That extends the Falcons drive. They were threatening to follow Miami's first three and out with their own three and out, but it continues. Moore was in the backfield. Now he moves over to the slot there at the top of your screen. And the pass is caught. Herbe Colby with his first catch of the game and a first down. All the way inside the 40 of Miami down at the 38 tackle for Randy Anderson. You see him outside. He's got the matchup on the edge. And again, the defense back to try and break on the football. That was number three. Dayon Nunley missed the ball. Allows Bowling Green to pick up another chunk of yardage. 17 yard gain. Colby again his first catch of the night, just his second catch of the season. Buffalo is added on to the lead in the third quarter. 26 first downs for the Falcons tonight. He fakes the handoff to Coppett and he throws down the near sideline and the adjustment and catch by the fullback Chris Pullman who battles his way into the end zone. 38 yard touchdown just his fourth catch of the year and his first touchdown for the junior Chris Pullman. You'll see the fullback again on the wheel route can get up the sideline there you see the ball under thrown usually a wide receivers kind of guy that comes back and makes that catch especially against the safety Randy Anderson. Adjusts to the football in the air and then barrels his way into the end zone. Fullback showing a little skills. Yes, indeed. That's 260 pounds. Tay with a point after. 45 3. It's worth another look when a fullback does this. You'll see him right here. He's going to go out and then up the sideline again. A little fan route, then he's going to go up the sideline. Look, he knows he's got it. The ball's underthrown. Look at him adjust to the football in the air, and then there's the fullback in him right there. Yards after catch. Pullman becomes the ninth different receiver tonight. For Bowling Green with a reception and a 38-yard TD for Pullman. Yeah, 
I think his teammates are happy for him. A bowling Green trying to snap a two game losing skit. Granted, they lost on the road to an SEC team, Mississippi State, by 1 21 20. And then heartbreaking loss in the I 75 rivalry game last week to Toledo. But you saw them at the beginning of the year, David. They won beating Tulsa 34 7. And you know, then a win at Kent State, lost to Indiana. But how have you seen this team develop? You saw them in game one. Now you're seeing them here in game nine. Well, I, I think we knew they were good on defense. They've missed Chris Jones, who's now playing the New England Patriots. Uh, but they're solid all the way across. You know, they miss their outstanding linebacker, Gabe Martin, who's out with the injury. But Boo Boo Gates has stepped up here today. We talked about that. And then also, I think the development of the quarterback, Matt Johnson, as you see, he gets better with each week. He knows the offense, and he does very rarely makes a mistake with the football. J.J. Greenwood tackled at the 15 yard line. Special teams play made by Taylor Royster. Number 51. Well, there's Boo Boo. Look at the Bowling Green defense on the season. Red zone defense second. Now that's in the FBS. Yeah, they're the number one defense in the MAC by far. But look, they're top 15 nationally. And they're sound at what they do. They attack on first and second down, try to get you behind the sticks so they can get creative with their blitz packages on third down. Miami only 12 total yards here in this second half. And a run by Treadwell up across the 25. Nice run on first down. Tackled by Paul Sin. Nine yard gain. Drew Coomer, the quarterback for Miami. Hand off again, Treadwell. Off right tackle, but should have a first down and does so at the 27 yard line. Tackled by a couple of different. Falcons, including Jude I.J. Barima. Treadwell again squirts through 40 down to the 43 yard line. That's Nemec actually Grant Nemec. Grant Nemec the ball carrier. Well, he burst it through the hole. We'll see. Nemec again. It's just a quick hit or look at the kick out. The guards up on the second level. There's a seam north and south. Well, that ball's got to hit in the A gap. Nemec's a true freshman. He and Spencer McKinnis, another one of the running backs for Miami, are actually cousins. Another nice run, Nemec. He's across midfield to the 49 yard line of Bowling Green. He makes six feet tall, 215 pounder in Commerce Township, Michigan. Nemec lost it there. Still loose. Still loose. And it looked like Miami was able to recover. Four or five players out there had a chance on it to scoop that ball up or at least recover it, including Coomer, the quarterback, at one time. But it doesn't look like this exchange is clean. Comes halfway into the pocket. And Nemec is hit as that ball squirts out. Nice hustle by looks like those. Pass deep. And the adjustment, but incomplete at the 28 yard line. Alvante Jenkins right over Jude IJ Barima. Fourth down. Mike Bath not looking real happy right now. Steve down by 42. Oh, you know, it's tough sledding. They do so many good things. They do so many good things between the 20s and moving the football. But on critical downs in the situations, you know, they just haven't been able to get it done. 
And that's that's you know that's what young teams do. They're learning some tough lessons right now. Five fumbles tonight for Miami. They've lost three of those. Murphy's punt. Burbrink. That bounced right on the goal line or near the goal line and then went out at the one, but it did touch the goal line, so it's a touchback. And we'll come out to the 20. Look, this is as close as it gets. The backspin is going. <laughs> he almost got that out at the one. Yeah. If that. Lands just a little shorter of where it landed near the goal line by just a few more inches. That would have been out at the one. Nice effort by the punter Zach Murphy. It's tough to tell if that actually hit the line or not. Murphy has won a couple of Mac Punter of the Week awards this year. Cop it with the carry on the final play of this third quarter up to the 25 for a gain of five. Another tough night for Miami. We'll head to the fourth quarter in Oxford. 45 3 Bowling Green. Back here in Oxford, have you been watching with us tonight? Matt Johnson looks like he's come out of the game at this point, but through three quarters, very impressive night for Johnson. Yeah, he's done a great job. Uh, had the one turnover, protecting the ball, making good decisions, and really excelled on third down. You see his ability, one, to run with the football, his athleticism and extending plays, and then their defense just really kind of applied pressure when they could. And Young teams don't handle pressure very well, and that's been the example here tonight by Miami, Ohio. This was a 7 to 3 game at one point. So Bowling Green now at 43 45 threes. We begin the fourth quarter. And Matt Schiltz came in as the quarterback. That final play of the third quarter for Bowling Green. So Schiltz, who was the starter the last three years and started the first game of this season against Tulsa. He's in there at quarterback for the Falcons. Schultz shovels. Fred Coppett out at the 30 yard line. There's Chris Wade defensively, a gain of six. You know, Matt Schultz had actually won the job in training camp and started the very first game. They just felt like they had to give Matt Johnson a chance to get in their play. And once he went in, 
boy, it's like the electricity on the team just changed. And those two guys are good friends, and, and they've had to compete against each other, which is a bit uncomfortable. But both guys have supported one another through the whole process. Schultz's his best season of his three as the starter really was 2011. He had 28 touchdown passes that year. Averaged 252 yards per game through the air. Brent Coppin with the rush. Cop it up to the 34. Schultz last year started all 13 games. 14 TD passes a year ago. He's out of Arcadia, California. You know, and we asked Dave Clawson, you know, how, how's Matt Schultz taking that? And he said, you know, frankly, for the first few weeks after he lost the job, he was moping around a little bit, not real happy, but has accepted it at this point. And as David said, he and Johnson are, are both very good friends and have been supportive of one another. Well, Johnson was very supportive of him when he won the job. And so, uh, you know, that goes both ways. And it, it hurts when you get beat out by somebody and someone plays well and you're not no longer the guy. It's a difficult thing to adjust to, but he's made the adjustment. He's a team guy. And, and that's why I think Bowling Green finds themselves right now in control of their own destiny. You see the numbers Matt Johnson's put up. And he's been like that all season long. But I would think, David, it would be especially hard from Schiltz's perspective when you've been the starter the last three years and this is your senior year. Yeah. And you're thinking OK. Want to go out on a high note. And then it just doesn't work out that way. But on the other side Schiltz has to think hey well the team has been winning. Schiltz fights through some traffic. High throw incomplete intended for bear. Matt Schultz's Went tonight for Bowling Green and they do become bowl eligible. in coverage. And there's Matt Johnson cheering on his his bud. Early fourth quarter from Oxford. A second down and ten with two receivers to each side for Schultz. High snap. He hands off. Cop it. To the 46 yard line. A gain of five where he's tackled by Chris Wade. Cop it's the true freshman out of St. Thomas Aquinas. And it's South Florida. He's a Fort Lauderdale native. That's an outstanding high school football program. Won a lot of football games. One of the top programs in Florida, and that's saying a lot. Coppin had 58 touchdowns in his career in high school at St. Thomas Aquinas. Schiltz is sacked. Back at the 41 yard line. Wes Williams and Bryson Albright with the sack. And Bryson Albright, you'll see, is one of the bright spots right here. You're going to see him dip and rip and get to the quarterback against the offensive tackle. Look at him flip his hips, get him feet back towards the quarterback, turn the corner. And he's six foot five, 230 pounds. He's a guy that's going to fill out. And he's going to be a heck of a player one day down the road. He'll be a force in the map. Brian Schmidt at Bush to punt. Back at the 12 is Fred McCray. Left footed punter gets that away. And takes a bowling green roll inside the 10. First punt of the night for Schmidt of Bush and Bowling Green, and they cover that well and tackle him inside the five.
Well, we've gotten the college football week started here on Tuesday, but on Thursday of Oregon Stanford as the week ahead is a big one. That's on ESPN Oklahoma Baylor also on Thursday night. Big battle in the Big 12 and then the battle in Tuscaloosa between 13th ranked LSU and number one Alabama on Saturday and history in the making. This is an interesting matchup because in the American Athletic Conference, the old Big East, Houston and Central Florida Saturday on ESPN 2. And the way things are structured for a team out of the MAC like a Northern Illinois or a Fresno State out of the Mountain West to sneak into the BCS, they need a little bit of help frequently. There's a carry for Scott up near the 20 yard line. Gain of 13, tackle by Sutton. So there's the BCS standings 11 through 20 of Northern Illinois at 18, Fresno State there at 16. And the. You see UC, uh, Louisville's at 20, UCF 21 if we expanded that. And the way things lay out for a team like Fresno State or a team like Northern Illinois, they need a team in the American Athletic Conference to finish with a very low 21 or up in the BCS standings. And the carry there. Treadwell, the champion of Conference USA, the MAC, Mountain West, or Sunbelt, earns an automatic berth if one of these two happens. They're ranked in the top 12, the final BCS standings, or ranked in the top 16 and ranked higher than the automatic qualifying conference champions. And the American Athletic Conference champion quite possibly may have a ranking of the BCS standings low enough, meaning that. 2021 20, or above that one of those teams like a Northern Illinois out of or below a Fresno in. State or below a Northern mm -hmm. Illinois right 16 and below and that's because of the automatic qualifier and that's exactly who uh, the Mountain West and, and and the Mac have to hope falters a little bit and you think Houston UCF playing each other Houston a one loss team Central Florida a one loss team boy that's gonna be a heck of a football game as well Houston leaves the country in takeaways and they've got a freshman quarterback O'Corn that is throwing the rock in that system under uh, head coach Levine. Seven unbeatens left in the football bowl subdivision including Northern Illinois. Out of the Mac. Fresno State of the Mountain West. Saw Jeff Tanner the left tackle for Miami. Having a bit of an issue. Nemec. Races through and spins up to the 42 43 yard line first down 12 yard gallop for Grant Nemec. And this is one thing I saw on film about this Miami of Ohio team. I talked to Mike Bath about it. I go look your team has not quit playing. These guys are coming off the ball. They're running downhill. Look it's just a lead play to the right. Offensive line's going to collapse. The fullback's going to kick out and they are running blocking hard. And you love to see that in a young football team. Even when they find themselves behind on the scoreboard and at 0 and 8. Again, Grant Nemec. Tugged down at the 47 yard line by Coy Brown, the third. And that's really been Mike Bass' challenges. How do you continue to coach guys up, point out the mistakes, but then find the, find the good things that are taking place, the improvements within the game that haven't quite translated to the scoreboard yet or to the win or loss column as well? And, and that's his challenge. How do I stay positive? How do I continue to coach them? And how do we evaluate the personnel of young players we have going forward? For the next staff, and we're really told the senior class is going. Hey, how you guys handled this tough time is going to determine what happens in the next five, six years here at Miami of Ohio and the rich tradition that exists here. Gary brought down at the 46-yard line, and you bring up a great point because you know Miami has had a very nice tradition here in football, and of course Ben Roethlisberger was a quarterback here 2001 through 2003. Cradle coaches. And what an experience uh, for this young football coach to be interim head coach and, and guide him through this process. And he's done a heck of a job. I mean, we saw him practice the other day. They're running around, working hard, spirited. Pass to the sideline is completed at the 43. A flag. Jenkins with the catch. And their defending was Will Watson and the flag thrown in his direction. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Number 21. 
15 yard penalty automatic first down so that'll add 15 yards Watson called for the face mask. You know that tells you a lot about the character of the people that make up your football team. It's easy to be spirited. It's easy to work hard when you're eight. No. When you're five and three. But can you do it when you, you haven't won a game? I mean that tells you a lot about the character of the young men within this program and there's something there to build off. They're young and there's some talent there. They just got to get it all together. Nemec straight ahead. Stopped at the 26. And a loss tonight would not only make Miami 0 and 9 overall this season and 0 and 5 in conference but a 13 game losing streak when you dated back to last year. Our last win came a little bit over a calendar year ago. October 27th of last year when they beat Ohio here and had to hang on to win that game. Boomer. Ankle tackle by Jude. IJ Barima. Third down and five for the Red Hawks. We're under seven and a half minutes to go in this fourth quarter. Coomer throws on the run towards the end zone. Incomplete looking for Scott right near the pylon. Ryan Sutton and the coverage on Scott. And that's one thing. What's one thing they want to do is they want to go up tempo on third down and they want to move the pocket. This time they roll it to the left again for a right handed quarterback. Boy, you got to try and turn your hips, square your shoulders to get that ball anywhere down the field. He almost got it to his receiver. Fourth down, a shot to the end zone is out of reach of Jenkins. And Miami turns it over on downs. 7 12 to go here at Oxford. 45 3, Bowling Green. Well, who might crash the party? How about Northern Illinois? They're 9-0 for the first time since the LBJ administration. Jordan Lynch is just a stud running and throwing the football. He's been doing it for a while, though. He's got Northern Illinois in the right direction once again. How about Derek Carr in Fresno State with 13 straight regular season wins? They just skimmed by San Diego State, though, a couple Saturdays ago. Yeah, and then they just got done beating Nevada. They're on their way playing well. That's a team that is believing 
in their quarterback and their ability to be anybody played a lot of close games a couple overtime games. They've uh, they've got it going there in Fresno. Interesting note there at the bottom though neither has faced. An AP ranked opponent. Bowling Green takes over on downs. We have our third different quarterback in the game for Bowling Green. This is a redshirt freshman, James Kanapke. Intended for Colby. Drew Coomer has been one of the two quarterbacks for Miami tonight. A bit of a frustrating evening. Bowling Green player down. ESPNU has a doubleheader of college football Saturday. First at four, ACC, NC State against Duke, and then at eight to the Mountain West, Utah State, UNLV. ESPNU's college football Saturday at four and eight o'clock Eastern on ESPNU. Both games are also live on Watch ESPN. Ben Stewart, the right guard, was the player that was down for Bowling Green. And empty hands off. Fred Coppett. Up to the 25-yard line, under seven minutes to go. And Penalty flag is down. Coming back after a hold against the Falcons. Here's the call. Holding. Offense, number 42, 10 yard penalty, repeat, second down. That's Chris Pullman, the fullback who had the touchdown catch on the uh, recent drive. Got called for the hold that time. More Mac action. You see there in the right hand corner, ESPN 2, CMU Ball State, Wednesday at 8 Eastern. Ball State playing very well. Coach Lembo's got those guys rolling once again. And Apke's pass is dropped by Coppets. Third down and 20. Bowling Green with a win tonight. They'll be six and three, four and one in conference. You can still control their own destiny with a big matchup against Ohio next week on the 12th. And they're at Eastern Michigan, then go to Buffalo to close out. The regular season. And off Coppet. It hard there at the 17 yard line. And it'll be fourth down. Now if you're thinking about Miami, their best chance to get a win. It's going to come in their next game, but they have to go on the road to Kent State because then they play here against Buffalo on November 19th, then at Ball State November 29th. So those three remaining games, you'd have to think, yeah, the next one at Kent State would be their best chance to avoid going winless. Second punt of the game for Brian Schmidtebush. Gray has to chase it towards the far side of the field, and we'll see it bounce out of bounds around the 35-yard line. 5.44 to go in Oxford.
national championship implications and the pride of two perennial powers on the line in primetime. Fifth-ranked Stanford hosts number three Oregon this Thursday at 9 Eastern on ESPN. Oxford, Ohio, 45-3 with 5.44 to go. Bowling Green. Dave Kloss, Dave Clawson looking to have his team bowl eligible once again with a win here tonight. They would go to six and three. Eight and five last year, lost to the military bowl at RFK Stadium. Ten bowl appearances in their school history at Bowling Green. Last bowl win back in 2004, the GMAC Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. They beat Memphis that year. That's when. Lamar Jacobs was their quarterback for Bowling Green. I'm going to tell you what, and Dave Kloss has done a great job of identifying the talent he has on the team and morphing his system around the talent and position players that he has. You know, when they went to the Humanitarian Bowl, they were a high flying spread offense, and then they went 2 and 10 in 2010, and then slowly started rebuilding around defense, kind of counterintuitive to the MAC. And they had the top ranked defense uh, in the MAC last year, again this year. And they run the football, control time possession. That's a game of one, third and eight. And they use their personnel. And one of those decisions was to move Travis Green from wide receiver to running back to give him some kind of speed and playmaker back there as they begin recruiting other guys. He's done just that for this offense. Third down at eight for the Red Hawks. Treadwell hit right as he took the handoff. That's Baird. And the tackle for loss. Ryan Baird, the defensive end, number 99. It's another one of those young defensive linemen, long armed, long legged, getting a chance to play and making plays. He really thinks he's done a great job there. They're built to last right now. They've got the depth. They've done their recruiting. They do their homework. It's a well coached football team. And their defense dominating once again. You mentioned earlier they lost Chris Jones, who was the MAC 2012 Defensive Player of the Year. And now playing well for the New England Patriots in the NFL. This is Moore, Ronnie Moore, with just the kicker to beat. The kicker slowed him down enough. And he's tackled at the 26 yard line. And holding that right shoulder after the return. 328 to go after a 49 yard return.
38 unanswered points for Bowling Green in this game. 45-3 Falcons with 3.28 left to the fourth quarter. Rubu Gates, a couple of fumble recoveries. Returned one for a touchdown. Matt Johnson, the Falcons starting quarterback, was 20-26. Travis Green, 14 carries, 112 yards tonight. A win for Bowling Green. They will become bowl eligible just after the 11 o'clock hour here on the East Coast. And you can join us for Mac football on this Tuesday night. Mark Dealey along with David Diaz and Fonte and our ESP and U crew. And coming up after our game, it's ESPN's 30 for 30. Bernie and Ernie presented by Buick. But Bernard King and Ernie Grunfeld. Carry is straight ahead up to the 25 yard line. Chris Wade with the tackle. Cop it. Well, the world's number one Red Hawk fan just made the show <laughs> with 3.07 to go in the fourth quarter. Good for him. I like the helmet. <laughs> Looks like the one I used to wear. <laughs> kind of a, uh, what was that guy? Super Day look. <laughs> it did look like Super Day. A classic <laughs> in itself. Yes. <laughs> Andre Gibbons now the back. And a carry for Andre. We're about three yards up to the 25. Rice at Albright. Tackler. Clock rolling under two and a half minutes to go. So Bowling Green's going to depart with six wins, six and three. They'll be bowl eligible, four and one in conference. They have a big matchup with Ohio next Tuesday night. In Bowling Green. Gibbons again trying to cut it outside, but he's pulled down for a loss. Back at the 27 by Chris Wade. Fourth down. So with a 45 to 3 lead. Looks like they're just going to let that play clock wind out and go for it on fourth down. No sense kind of rubbing it in here, David, with a field goal at this point. Hard running for Coppett. And it looks like he's going to have the first down. Brought down by Tyler Tucker, so they convert on fourth down and eight. Boy, you see Coppett hit that hole 100 miles an hour. Two big games with postseason implications. On a football doubleheader on ABC at 3.30 Eastern, Nebraska, Michigan. And then at 8 Eastern, Notre Dame. And Pitt college football on ABC Notre Dame Michigan at 3:30 Notre Dame pits at eight Nebraska Michigan it's an all going at 3:30 30 30th first down of the night for Bowling Green and it's going to be their last as they take a knee and that's going to do it here in Oxford tonight 30 for 30 Bernie and Ernie coming up next here on ESPNU. And a dominating night for Bowling Green Day. Well, Dave clawson has got this football team going. They're well coached. I think they're balanced. Uh, they're good on both sides of the ball. Uh, they're, they're a team to contend with, and they're going to keep getting better as their young quarterback continues to, to grow and evolve and take care of the football. The nice night for their starting quarterback, Matt Johnson. Bowling Green, bowl eligible, still control their own destiny, trying to win the MAC East and make it to the MAC title game. Again, our final score Bowling Green 45. And Miami 3. Up next, it's our 30 for 30 presented by Buick, Bernie, and Ernie. For David Diaz and Fonte and our entire crew, I'm Mark Neely. Thanks for sharing this one with us. Good night from Oxford, Ohio.